Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the CBL X's and O's podcast for season 2023. We're reviewing what was round 12 in the Southwest Conference from the weekend, Beck, and some interesting games and potentially one upset that we sort of said in the preview that the team needs to keep winning, and they did this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. There was, um, yeah, that big surprise um, upset game, which we'll get into, which I think um, has helped a couple of other teams by default for their positioning on the ladder. Sure has. And let's start with it in the men. Mount Gambier welcomed Warnable into the ice house. And we thought that Mount Gambier were going to be on top of this game, but the young and upcoming Seahawks got the biscuits in the end running out with a 15, 16 point win. Yeah, absolutely. And like we had a look at the lineups and, you know, it it looks like they had everybody, Mount Gambia, you know, Daly, DeWitt, Burkefield. So, you know, I don't think that they could potentially say that they were any short of um, their players. But, you know, with that win, Warnable keeps their, you know, keeps their finals hopes alive and um, actually helped Horsham because they were second and they've been popped back up to top now by default. So, um, yeah, very, very interesting um, men's letter, as we said. We'll get to that. But, you know, three teams sitting there on eight wins, every single game and points is super vital. Definitely is. And obviously, Riley Nicholson shooting 18 points was a pretty big piece of the puzzle for the Seahawks, but, you know, had really good support from Adam Lawson and Harry McGorn by the looks of things as well. Yeah, they're, they're just all kids and they're having a crack. And, you know, I think that Warnable really like to look to use their CBL program as, a, you know, like a youth league type of thing for their big V. And, you know, some of these kids have got good futures ahead in that Seahawks program. And I think they're always going to come together. And um, it looks like they're hitting their straps just at the right time of the season. And the other game in the men on Saturday night was the Hamilton Hurricanes travelling across to Millicent to take on the Magic and... Fraser Bradley for the Magic shot 29 points in what was a stellar performance for the Magic and got them the victory. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it looks like they've got all, you know, some some very f- names that we're not familiar with in their team. So um, it was probably a really good win by the Millicent in the end. But, yeah, Hamilton have, have done well. Josh Miller's come out and got 17 points again. Uh, just continuing on his, um, you know, very consistent and, you know, excellent season. Um, I'll be really interested to see if he does it, maybe get himself in the All-Star 5 for, you know, his constant and very, very, um, you know, good performance he's had every week. He'd be probably averaging, you know, nearly 20 points a game. So, yeah, so it's ex- it's still exciting for Hamilton, as we said. You know, their success is the fact that they're back in the league. So they've got lots of good things to look to. And then on Sunday, Mount Gambier were able to get back on the winners list when they took on the Hamilton Hurricanes and, you know, Simon Berkefeld got back to his high scoring uh, platform and shot 27 points for the Lakers as they beat the Hurricanes. Yeah, it looks like it was um it was a probably a bit better yeah game for them on the Sunday with some you know three nearly four players with over twenty points that's you know pretty hard to beat when you're trying to defend that and you know again as we've said um you know Hamilton's come out you know Josh is again there Joy Joel Leroy's there as well for the point scorers but um I think um yeah that was just looks like a bit of a training run there for Mount Gambia but um. Yeah, Hamilton still, they're getting that 60, 70 points on the board. So, you know, lots of things to look forward to for them. And Portland made the road trip all the way down to Colac to take on the Cookers. And Toby Jennings, 23 points, led all scorers in that game. Yes, and I did happen to see the Portland bus, actually, before they headed off on their trip to Colac Sunday morning. And uh, it was all talk about Toby Jennings not getting top scoring, but fouling off. So, I think he will be very, very happy with himself. Coach Hayden will probably be happy that he didn't manage to get himself fouled off. So um, that's not only a win for him being top scorer, but finishing with one foul, I think, is probably nearly uh, season high performance. Let's have a look at the ladder after our round 12. And we've got Horsham and Mount Gambia sitting first and second, both with 10 and 3 records. It then gets very congested in third, fourth, and fifth, where we've got Millicent, Portland, and Warnable all on eight wins. A uh, couple of games up their sleeve, Millicent do, and then Portland have one extra game on top of Warnable. So they're, 
the next few games for them three teams are really important. And we mentioned it in the preview that Millicent, Portland and Warnable, they all just have to keep winning as many games as possible to give them their best opportunity of making the top four. We then have Tarang, Kolak, both on five wins, and then Ararat and Hamilton round out the ladder with two and one win each, respectively. So let's have a look in the women. And Warnable travelled to Mount Gambia to take on the Lakers, and the Mermaids were able to get the job done, but it was a very close game in the scoreline. Yeah, it was. I mean, honestly, probably closer than what I would have expected. Um, but you know, uh, these games can be interesting at this time of year, as we know, because it does depend on player availability and we do, you know, have a lot of people that tend to go on holidays. So, um, you know, having a look at, um, the scorers for Warnable, you've got, you know, Molly McLaren's come out with 17 points. So she's had a really good game. Molly McKinnon actually was back in. So, you know, she's one of their older, more experienced girls. Um, so she's come in to, to help out Matilda Sewell. You know, she's having a great season, Mia Mills as well. So, you know, it just looks like maybe they might have just been a little bit rusty after Christmas. But, you know, Warnable are up there with Portland cemented just about in their top one and two spots. So, you know, both quality teams. And, um, yeah, I think Matt Gamby would have really liked to probably get over that game so that could have helped them try and get their, their final spot in there. But, um, yeah, it looked like it would have been a good game to watch. And then Sunday, Colac welcomed Portland into Colac as they took on the Coasters. And again, another very close game in the women that we probably didn't expect to be so close. Sienna Stone for Portland shooting 24 points was obviously a huge benefit for them. Yeah, and, you know, Colax is that team that can come out and get a win at any time because they're just, you know, they just don't give up. They're quite fast, physical. Uh, they play a really, really up-in-your-face kind of game, which I love. So, you know, I, I, as much as I was surprised that it was that close, and I think it was right down to the line, like maybe I think I was seeing on the updates on Facebook, like, you know, to the last couple of seconds, they were only up by three, you know, so it was a pretty, sounds like a, a really quite close game. Um, and, you know, Sienna Stone, like she's come out and had 24 points. You've got Tylee Barr, who's a great player, 10. Summer Millard's one of their young girls, another one with 10. You know, another girl, um, Petch with uh, 15. There's no, oh, yeah, Heidi's in there as well. So, look, you know, they've um, they've had all of their their players still have contributing on the scoreboard. But, um, you know, Colac, again, you've got Harmony. Um, it might, maybe they had a couple of new people back into. I'm not sure if we've seen much of Millie Sibley. I think she might have been their centre that hurt themselves. But Indy Cameron's having a great season as well. So, yeah, look, it's it's a testament to Colac. And I think, um, you know, they potentially could pick up a couple of those odd wins coming into the last few games of the season. But, um, yeah, Portland have just cemented their spot up there now after that win. They certainly have. Now let's have a quick look at the ladder. And this ladder is a little bit different to the men where we've got our Top two teams pretty much locked in in the top two positions, that being Warnable currently sitting on top. Portland finishing playing all their games for the season in the regular season, sitting second currently. So the Portland could jump to, to the top spot. It's all going to depend on Warnable in their last two games. Uh, with them, we've got Millicent sitting third and Horsham fourth, both teams sitting on four wins. Mount Gambia fifth with three wins. So again, between them three teams, they're battling for the last two spots. And then we've got Colac rounding out the ladder with the only one win so far. But they've been uh, a competitive team, this Colac team, all season. Yeah, absolutely. And if they get a couple of senior players back, they'll be definitely right up there. It's, it's all very close. And even, you know, uh, when we played Portland just before Christmas and we ended up, um, as we said, like, you know, with only a few players left after the fouls. But, I mean, we were only down by five. Um, going into like five minutes to go in the last quarter. Same with Warnable. I think it was an eight or 10 or seven point game. So, you know, it's really, really close. And even though Colac only has the one win, they've been super competitive as well. So it's been a really good competition and season because you just, you have to go out and you have to play your best on the day. And, you know, every game is literally a challenge. So, you know, that's really what you want. And I mean, you know, Warnable's still got two games to go. Millicent, two games. We've got two games in Mount Gambia, two games. So those two games are going to be, um, yeah, really interesting to see what happens here. That's it. That's our round two review in the Southwest Conference. So I will uh, jump on a call with you later in the week, Beck, and we will preview what will be round 13 in the Southwest Conference. So for everyone out there, stay tuned.